In this video we will delve into the specific considerations and practical advice for effectively managing various situations when using automated insulin delivery systems. These situations include dealing with hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, high-fat meals, exercise, illness, alcohol, and travel. It is important to note that the following guidelines are expert opinions and not official recommendations. Be aware that everybody is unique and your diabetes may vary. On top of that, each automated insulin delivery system has its unique features, so consulting healthcare providers and adhering to personalized plans is vital for effective management. 1. Hypoglycemia With automated insulin delivery systems, fewer carbohydrates are typically needed to treat hypoglycemia compared to traditional insulin therapy. During a hypoglycemic event, it is recommended to consume only 5 to 10 grams of uncovered carbohydrates, unless exercising or when a significant meal bolus overestimation occurs. Certain automated insulin delivery systems, like CAM APS FX, Diabelup, and some open source automated insulin delivery systems, allow you to enter the carbohydrates you consume to treat hypoglycemia without administering insulin for them. It is recommended to follow this approach so that the system's algorithm can account for these carbohydrates. Wait for 15 minutes before retreating hypoglycemia to avoid oscillating glucose levels. After a correction for hypoglycemia, it is advisable to perform a finger prick test to assess the need for further sugar intake, considering the lag time of the sensor. To prevent hypoglycemia, you can temporarily increase the target value on your automated insulin delivery system. You might find this useful in the following situations, during a period of recurring hypoglycemia, during an active holiday or in a warmer climate, when starting a new job or returning to school or training after holidays. If someone using an automated insulin delivery system experiences a severe hypoglycemic episode with reduced consciousness or enters a coma, the response should be the same as with someone without an automated insulin delivery system. Encourage them to consume sugar, and if that fails, administer glucagon and call an ambulance. In the case of someone in a hypocoma, you may disconnect the insulin pump since they do not need additional insulin. After administering glucagon, the person should recover quickly. 2. Hyperglycemia Hyperglycemia can occur when a person with diabetes is ill, stressed, in pain, taking corticosteroids or experiencing hormonal changes, for example, premenstrual period in women or a growth spurt in children. In cases of mild hyperglycemia, it is generally recommended to rely on the automated insulin delivery system and avoid giving excessive manual correction boluses or false carbs, as this can often lead to hypoglycemia one to three hours later. If a manual correction bolus is necessary, it is advisable to use the bolus calculator whenever possible. Some automated insulin delivery systems offer additional options for delivering more insulin, such as the boost function in the CAM APS FX algorithm, increased aggressiveness for normo and hyperglycemia in Diabelup, or temporary target adjustments or increased insulin release percentage in open-source automated insulin delivery systems. If blood glucose levels remain high for an extended period without an apparent reason, for example more than 270 mg per deciliter or 50 mmol per liter with no decreasing trend, or no 50 mg per deciliter or 2.7 mmol per liter decrease within one hour after an insulin bolus, consider the possibility of a blockage or infusion set problem. When in doubt, it is recommended to replace the catheter and infusion set promptly. The mantra is, if in doubt, change it out. Anyone using an insulin pump should be familiar with what to do in case of hyperglycemia. Various step-by-step -step plans are available, depending on whether you have access to ketone strips or not. Here is an example. 1. Monitor blood glucose with a finger prick test and ketones every 2 to 4 hours until the glycemia is back to normal. Elevated ketone levels indicate the need to switch to manual mode and follow the guidelines provided by your diabetes care team. In adults, ketones are considered elevated when they are higher than 1.5 millimol per liter, while for children, this applies from 0.6 millimol per liter. Once ketone levels return to normal, auto mode can be re enabled. 2. Administer a manual insulin correction bolus. If blood glucose levels do not decrease after a manual correction bolus, it is recommended to administer an insulin bolus using an insulin pen. 3. Check and replace the infusion set, tubing, and insulin reservoir. Drink an adequate amount of water, for example, 500 ml per hour. 
hyperglycemia can lead to dehydration, which exacerbates the condition. It is important to drink plenty of fluids during hyperglycemic episodes. Finally, 4. Be aware of the signs of ketoacidosis, such as vomiting. Vomiting is a sign of ketoacidosis. If persistent hyperglycemia causes vomiting, it is crucial to contact your diabetes care team or go to the emergency department for intravenous treatment with fluids and insulin. Since a pump blockage can occur at any time, it is important to carry the necessary equipment to address such situations. This includes an insulin pump cartridge, infusion set, blood glucose meter, test strips, and an insulin pen with short-acting insulin to administer boluses if needed. When traveling, it is also recommended to have long-acting insulin available in case the pump malfunctions. To avoid infusion set issues, it is advisable to change the infusion set every two to three days and set a reminder on your pump for this task. 3. High-fat meals High-fat meals pose challenges in insulin dosing due to delayed carbohydrate absorption. Here are some general guidelines, although they may not work as well in everybody and need to be individualized. Enter the grams of carbs you are going to eat without taking into account the fats and proteins. If your closed-loop system allows it, you can opt for an extended bolus. If you experience hypoglycemia shortly after the bolus, you can try administering only 70% of the carbohydrates and allow the automated insulin delivery system to compensate for the remaining glucose increase. If the previous approach doesn't work, you can try splitting the bolus by giving 50% of the carbohydrate grams before the meal and the remaining 50% two hours later. Some automated insulin delivery systems provide additional features that can be used for a high-fat meal, Tandem Control IQ allows you to change a normal meal bolus into an extended bolus and DIY Loop allows you to set the carb absorption time of the carbs you enter. Cam Apps FX, Diabaloop, and Android APS have an Add Carbs option. This allows you to enter carbs that will be covered with insulin only when blood glucose levels rise. 4. Exercise Physical activity increases the risk of hypoglycemia. Here are some tips to consider before, during, and after exercise. Before sports. Use the exercise mode of your automated insulin delivery system to reduce the risk of hypoglycemia during planned activities. Set it up one to two hours before and during the sport to decrease insulin delivery while exercising. If you exercise within two to three hours of a meal, consider reducing the meal bolus by 25 to 75 percent, depending on the type, intensity, and duration of the activity, as well as your fitness level, current blood glucose level, and insulin on board. Unless trending towards hypoglycemia, avoid consuming carbohydrates 15 minutes to one hour before exercise. The automated insulin delivery system will automatically increase insulin delivery in response to carbs. Aim for a glucose more than 120 mg per deciliter or 6.7 millimol per liter before starting moderate intensity aerobic exercise. Check your glucose 10 minutes before the start. If it's below 120 mg per deciliter or 6.7 millimol per liter, consider consuming 15 grams of carbs. During sports, use the exercise mode of your automated insulin delivery system to elevate the target for blood glucose levels. Aim for a blood glucose level above 120 mg per deciliter or 6.7 millimol per liter at the start and during the activity. If needed, consume small amounts of carbs gradually, for example, every 30 minutes, without entering them into the closed-loop system. You can try connecting your sensor app to your smartwatch or cycling computer. That way, you can more easily eat small amounts of carbohydrates from the moment your trend arrow tilts or your glycemia drops below 120 mg per deciliter, 6.7 millimol per liter. If you need to disconnect the pump for more than 15 minutes, for example, during swimming, it's important to stop insulin delivery. For prolonged exercise, it is advisable to maintain a low basal insulin rate and supplement with carbohydrates to prevent ketone development. If you experience hypoglycemia after exercising, continue using the exercise mode for 6 hours after exercise or throughout the night. Consider reducing boluses by up to 50% for the post-exercise meal or consume a bedtime snack without entering it into the automated insulin delivery system. Of course, these recommendations are general guidelines. Adjusting insulin dosages based on exercise trends and individual needs often requires a trial and error approach. It's essential to work closely with your healthcare team to fine tune your insulin regimen for optimal management during physical activity. 5. Illness and Medical Procedures 
During illness, it is common to experience hyperglycemia. In such cases, follow the guidelines for managing hyperglycemia. When undergoing medical procedures or tests, it is generally best to disconnect the pump. However, the specific recommendations may vary depending on the type of procedure. For an X-ray, you can leave the sensor and transmitter in place, ensuring they are away from the radiation field and covered with a lead apron. For a CT scan, it is best to remove the pump, sensor, and transmitter. Some people may choose to leave the sensor and transmitter in place if they are away from the radiation field, but it is crucial to consult with the healthcare team. For an MRI, disconnect the pump and remove the sensor and transmitter before the procedure. The sensor can cause burns during the MRI. Upon admission to a hospital, if you are mentally fit, you may be able to continue using your automated insulin delivery system. However, this depends on the hospital's policy and should be discussed with your healthcare provider. For endoscopy or minor procedures without diathermy, it may be possible to keep the automated insulin delivery system in place if agreed upon by the surgical team. In such cases, consider using a higher temporary target and ensure the infusion set and sensor placement are away from the surgical field. Keep your mobile phone or handset nearby if the algorithm runs on it. For larger procedures involving diathermy or when the surgical team does not agree, remove the pump and sensor and switch off auto mode. Please exercise caution with the accuracy of the sensor in cases of significant edema or surgeries with important hemodynamic impact. Additionally, be mindful of frequent intravenous use of paracetamol during hospital admissions. These factors may affect the reliability of the sensor readings and extra attention should be given to ensure accurate insulin management during such situations. If the sensor remains in place during an X-ray, CT scan, or surgery with diathermy, it is recommended to check its accuracy afterward by performing a finger prick test. Calibrating the sensor may be necessary for devices like Dexcom G6 or Guardian sensors. 6. Alcohol Alcohol can affect blood glucose levels, and caution should be exercised to prevent hypoglycemia. Different types of alcoholic beverages can vary in their effects. Some alcoholic drinks, such as certain beers and breezers, contain carbohydrates that can cause a rise in blood glucose levels. Other drinks, like wine or spirits mixed with diet soda, may not contain carbohydrates. It's important to note that hypos can still occur hours later, irrespective of the initial effect on blood glucose levels. Automated insulin delivery systems respond to rising glucose levels by increasing insulin delivery. However, they are unaware of alcohol consumption and may not anticipate the delayed lowering effect. If you choose to drink alcohol, it is recommended to proactively prevent hypoglycemia by temporarily increasing your target level to reduce insulin administration. Consuming more carbohydrates will not help, as the automated insulin delivery system will compensate by increasing insulin delivery. 7. Travel Considerations When traveling with an automated insulin delivery system, it's important to be prepared and take certain precautions. Here are some tips to keep in mind. Make sure to pack an ample supply of all the necessary equipment and supplies for your automated insulin delivery system, including insulin, infusion sets, reservoirs, and glucose monitoring supplies. It's better to have more than you think you'll need to avoid any shortage during your trip. Don't forget your device charger and an appropriate travel plug if needed. It's always wise to carry an emergency card stating that you have diabetes. If you are flying, you might need a flight certificate for your insulin, sensor, and pump. Consider declaring medical baggage, which allows for an additional 2 kilograms of weight and ensures that your insulin and equipment won't be placed in the cargo hold where freezing may occur. In case your pump malfunctions or fails during your trip, many pump manufacturers provide an emergency replacement service, delivering a new insulin pump to you within 24 hours. However, be aware that in remote or isolated locations, like islands, the delivery time may be longer. Therefore, it is essential to have backup plans in place. Some manufacturers also offer a holiday loaner pump, which can be ordered a few weeks before your trip, ensuring you have a spare pump for added peace of mind during your travels. Consider using a higher target value for the first few days of your holiday. This can help prevent the risk of hypoglycemia, especially if you anticipate being more active than usual or traveling to a destination with warmer weather. Most automated insulin delivery systems powered by a mobile phone app will automatically adjust the pump clock time when traveling across time zones. However, for specific pumps like Minimed 780G and Tandem pumps, manual adjustment is necessary. Some airlines require passengers to put their mobile phones on airplane mode during takeoff and landing, 
which can temporarily interrupt Bluetooth communication with your automated insulin delivery system. If this happens, don't worry. You can have a device in airplane mode and switch the Bluetooth back on separately. If this is not possible, after 30 minutes, the system will switch to the manual mode until Bluetooth connectivity is restored. Once you're allowed to use your phone again, remember to turn off airplane mode promptly to ensure auto mode resumes. By following these tips, you can have a more seamless and stress-free experience while traveling with your automated insulin delivery system. Enjoy your trip and stay prepared for optimal diabetes management. As you manage special situations with automated insulin delivery systems, keep in mind that achieving time and range is essential, but equally important is your time and happiness. Please take care of your emotional well-being and try to avoid diabetes burnout. Remember, diabetes management can be challenging and it's okay to seek help and take breaks when needed. By staying informed, prepared, and mindful of your mental health, you can confidently navigate the complexities of diabetes management with automated insulin delivery systems and lead a fulfilling life.